Scientists around the world are creating more accurate illustrations of just how rapidly the Earth's climate is changing. Professor Ed Hawkins of the National Center for Atmospheric Science in the UK released this map recently. It shows shades of red and blue representing the amount of the planet's warming compared to other parts. Scientists say the map offers a clearer perspective of how unevenly the Earth's temperature is changing. CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Baradelli joins us now to discuss. Hi, Jeff. So this map by Ed Hawkins is getting a lot of attention. What is so significant about it and why are scientists calling it a warning? So, Tanya, I've seen a lot of climate maps, as you can imagine, in, in my career, and this really caught my attention. And here's the reason why. Look at these bright shades of red, and then right in the middle, a big blue bullseye. So one of these things is not like the other. Something is not quite right. That's what this image is indicating. And what's not right is that we have some cooling going on in a pretty large area of the northern Atlantic. Now, normally you'd say, well, cooling is good, right? We want some cooling to kind of balance out all the global warming. The problem is that this is a canary in the coal mine, a warning that the climate system, or at least part of it, is beginning to break down. And a big part of it, and that's the Gulf Stream system in the Atlantic Ocean. Ocean, which transports warm water, warm air, northward towards the North Pole and the uh, northern part of the Northern Hemisphere. And so as that slows down, the redistribution of heat, which is absolutely necessary because remember, we have a lot more heat down in the equator than at the poles, and the natural system kind of redistribute that heat is the Gulf Stream system in the Atlantic Ocean, and that is slowly breaking down and slowing down uh, because you know things are out of balance in the atmosphere. So, can we take a, a look at this map, and can you kind of point out to us the the, the areas of most concern? I mean, I, it's, you can't miss that big, huge blue bullseye in the middle of, of yeah. all that red. Yeah. Uh, but, but can you sort of, you know, explain to our viewers exactly what they're looking at on that map? Absolutely, for sure. So where you see the red, that's the polar areas and the Arctic areas. There's the United States, there's Europe and Asia right there. And you can see that it's warming much more rapidly, three times the pace in the Arctic regions. But where it's not warming and it's actually cooling, and it's one of the only places on Earth is where you see the really dark shades of blue. By the way, the lighter shades of blue are still warming. They're just warming relatively slower compared to the rest of the planet. Really, the only place that's cooling is right here, and that's why we're so concerned. But you can imagine with all of that heating up here in the poles, uh, that's causing a lot of ice to melt. And that is what is causing that big blue hole in the North Atlantic and causing the Gulf Stream to slow down. Oh, interesting. So it's accumulating some of that melting ice. Is that what's going on there? That's exactly what's happening. In fact, I think we have a movie that we could show you on this. So basically, here's what's happening. It's so warm uh, up near the poles, warming, again, three times the pace uh, of the rest of the planet, of the average of the planet, that it's causing a lot of ice to melt off Greenland. And that fresh water is flowing into the North Atlantic. Now, typically, the reason why the currents are able to move is they have an engine kind of forcing them along. That engine is sinking water in the North Atlantic. That's because the water is very salty, it's heavy, it's cold, it's dense, and it's sinking. But what's happening is that's becoming fresher. It's not as salty. It's not as dense because of the runoff from Greenland, from the melt of Greenland. And that fresher water is slowing down the mechanism to kind of allow that water to sink, the overturning circulation in the Atlantic. And so since 1950, the Gulf Stream system, which carries that warm water up along the eastern seaboard, we're familiar with the Gulf Stream, has slowed by 15 percent. And we think by 2100, it could slow by as much as 45 percent. If that were to happen, the system could collapse. The Gulf Stream system could collapse. And this is a linchpin for the climate system. It is arguably the most important climate system controlling most of the climate system on, on Earth because it is where a lot of the um, transfer of ocean heat starts and then it kind of propagates around the world into the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean as well. So those ocean currents are all important. Scientists have got to keep their eye on that. All right, well, Jeff Baradelli, thank you so much for breaking that down to us and explaining a little bit more what we're looking at. We appreciate it. You're welcome.